The shop increases each day, but exactly equal to his desire for food. And what you will now witness is virtually a nervous breakdown. How to destroy the personality without laying a finger on the owner. Interesting to see if a man will follow the same behaviour pattern. I think we don't want him dead, but in a condition so that we can rebuild his personality our way. Eleanor! Eleanor, for God's sake, open the bloody door! Yes? It's Crombie. I'm not sure if Eleanor's up yet. Oh, for God's sake, she went out half an hour ago. Oh, very well. You are a heavy sleeper. I have been walking up and down Harley Street for an hour and three quarters. I'm exhausted. And finally, out came Eleanor plus the twins yelling. But she wasn't taking any notice. She just bundled them into the car and rolled off without as much as a backward glance. You haven't got very much to say for yourself. You haven't given me much of a chance. You look dreadful. Is this where you slept last night? Locked out of the conjugal bedroom? Wouldn't be the first time, would it, eh, Frank? What's the matter, eh? Getting careless? Eleanor discovered you've been two-timing her. She's taken the twins and gone to her mother's. She's not sure when she'll be back. I need time to think. That's Eleanor for you. I'd mind the twins as if her mother wasn't enough. Sounds like a bust-up. Should I be sorry? I wouldn't have thought being sorry was much in your line. Oh, I can go through the boat. No, well, don't bother. What do you want? What's happened to your professional charm? Your bedside manner? Too much practice? Good job I'm not a patient, Frank. You might have lost me. Look, what is it? Look, this isn't a social call. I've come to give you information and some advice. Well? I've discovered who's been following you. Nobody more sinister than the private detective, one who deals in divorce proceedings. He's got an office in Paddington full of disguises, hats mostly, and lives in Finchley. Your wife must be looking for grounds. Oh, thanks for the information. What's the advice? Stop mixing business with pleasure, Frank. You could get struck off. It's all too close to quorum. Anything else? Yeah, you could do with a shave. I'm rather inclined to believe that that detective of Eleanor's has discovered something. It could account for your present situation. He did, so I killed him. Frank, what? Now, that's what Eleanor said. She knows? She should do, dear. She was there. How did you do it? believe you. It's uncharacteristic of you. Where did you do it? Yeah. Here. Here? Well, there, actually. In the chair. Oh, it's not like you, Frank. It's not your style at it all. It is now. Oh, it's quite painless. Quick, really, you know, uh, humane. Where is he now? I left him by the side of a pub in East India Dock Road. You did it alone, without any help? Yes. Without being seen? I think so, I hope so. I was in drag. Well, street clothes, actually, but still a bit flamboyant. Had a handbag with a wallet inside. There were just a few dog-eared cards. Oh, and uh, two tickets for the National Theatre for next week. Revival of salad days. Don't understand this nostalgia for the 50s, do you? Wonder who he was taking. Eleanor, maybe. They've formed quite a relationship. Frank, you're becoming maudlin. You must maintain a detachment. Of course, I've discovered who he is. Oh, of course. I'll go over his office. I've been there already. Nothing? Just hats. And Finchley? More hats. I did it for all of us. For the Quarmbys. Not killing him would have been careless. I didn't enjoy it, but neither do I regret it. You want absolution? And Eleanor? Frightened to death. She saw it and did nothing? Well, she couldn't believe it was happening. It was like a bizarre charade. No. Oh, she wants no part of it. When I'd finished at Paddington, I came back here and went up to our room. Oh, she hadn't locked the door. Not Eleanor. 
Her gestures are far more subtle. She'd taken the twins from their room and was sleeping between them in our bed. She always did have a penchant for the dramatic, defying me to sully their innocence or something or other. It was her bloody <coughs> fault after all? She's a danger. She's also my wife. I'll worry about Eleanor. Yes, you always were rather good at handling women, weren't you, Frank? Uh, where does her mother live? Sussex, near oh, Beckley. What a coincidence. I know the area near Beckley quite well. Oh? Well, we might have friends in common. Oh, I hardly think so. Eleanor's mother. Hardly your style. Be careful, Frank. Don't push it too far. Remember that little militant Jamaican girl who was repatriated? Well, the boy she's left behind has become fascinated with explosives, and of course I have. Oh, for it. God's sake! Look, nothing's happening. We're getting nowhere. One dead Captain of Minster, four dead G's, and not a flicker of reaction out of the government. So, I have encouraged him, and I've arranged a car, and he's going to lob one of his homemade bombs right into one of the Guardian's HQs. We need bigger Quarmby gestures. Maybe. Maybe we've been pulling the wrong dog's tail. Maybe we should go for the guard dog instead of the lap dog. Go for the G's. Yes, Frank. And just as so long as we can pin the blame on someone else. Someone tangible. Someone the G's can really get their teeth into. I'm tired of London. I want to live by the sea or somewhere in the country. I'm not taking a walk in Hyde Park after lunch. There are too many people in Hyde Park with too many dogs. Somewhere else, then? Hampstead Heath? I want to do something. Romantic. Get away. Mm. I'll plan something. No, nothing planned. Something spontaneous. You don't understand, do you? Chris, you're the most predictable man I've ever known. Is that a criticism? No. It's just not romantic. I enjoy our weekends together, but they become so predictable. Then come Monday and you're off again. Perthshire, Shropshire, Devonshire. Always somewhere seeing someone writing reports. Then back here to catch up on the news. I don't know why you don't just go to a library, never mind about me. Do you read every word? Every column? You'll end up wearing glasses. My father did. He used to spend hours on the racing page. Hours. He wasn't a slow reader. I could never live with you. Not permanently. The weekends are quite enough. What I can't stand is being ignored for long periods. You are not ignored. You've been talking for hours. Every thought has come into your head. I've just had to divide my attention, that's all. Oh, sorry you've had to do that. Go on, ignore me completely. I'll think of something to do. You'll think of something to say. After all, I am used to being on my own. Self-sufficient, self-supporting. Just me and my self-respect. Do you know I'm regarded with awe at the data bank? That's Claire Weston, they whisper. Husband disappeared in the G's. All very fishy. They're intrigued. You intrigued, Chris? Or am I still being ignored? <laughs> what? That's a very good cartoon. Um, hmm. Doesn't translate. Are world affairs that interesting? World opinion is. And you get that by reading the foreign press now that the censorship is so strict. I get the facts about England in French and German and from the Paris edition of the Herald Tribune. The Americans are taking a very pompous line regarding themselves as the last bastion of democracy. That's a laugh. Look at them with their riots. Every summer it's a mass murder and they have to make some great gesture in outer space to bring back world opinion. You know, sometimes I think my father has a point. Democracy leads to moral chaos there, but for the grace of Timothy Hobson goes England. If only went about it in the right way and didn't think of himself as God. You're like your father, aren't you? Of the son. I have no idea. Why do you ask? I've noticed things. The way you both preach. Well, it's Sunday. It can't always be a romance. I know. There's nothing romantic about my computer five days a week. That's why I expect so much from our weekends. Life can be so boring. England's dull, drab, carbolic. Find out here, philosopher. Who provides the ideas? I talk to Benedict. He understands what I mean. You discuss the malaise in England and the life in general? Of course. It's all part of my readjustment. Don't be unkind. Try and understand. 
Did you uh, used to chatter like this to Tom? Yes. And did he understand? Always. Then I shall have to do my best to. Be awake by now. Mm. That's better. Good morning. Mm. Huh. Uh, who are you? Had a good sleep? Feeling better? Who are you? Thorne. Dr. Thorne. Well, Captain, actually. I'm a G welfare officer. This is Dr. Dax. Settling in, Tom. Uh, where is it? You'll find everything you need here. Bathroom there, that a shower. Over there, a little kitchenette. If you don't fancy the hospital, you can cook up what you like. Just write me out a shopping list. Over there. Desk paper, lots and lots of paper. Hospital? Drinks covered. I've stocked it up for you. Anything else you need, just tell me. We're almost absurdly over-subsidized these days. Which newspaper would you like, by the way? Which, which, which hospital? Oh, yes. Buzzer. A buzzer? Anytime you want me, just buzz away. Now, take it easy. Sit in the chair. You're bound to feel a bit shaky. Oh, yes. And books. What books would you like me to get uh, you? Why, why am I in hospital? Good long rest. Why? You know perfectly well, Tom. Now, no, take it easy. You're still a bit weak. But we'll build you up, never fear. Oh, I want some air. Where's the oh, window? That, I'm afraid, is the only point for missing no window. Rather, there is, but it's been boarded up. Why? I'm sorry about that. Why is the window Necessary boarded Necessary precaution, old chap. Why? You do like to ask questions, don't you? We're going to have some rare old sessions together. I can see that. Tell me, what do you think about marriage as such? I want some air. Air conditioned throughout. I like to see when I'm breathing. We can't let you try again now, can we? I mean, be reasonable. Try what again? Suicide. Don't you remember jumping through a window at the detention centre? No. Ah! That means you don't want to. I want to amnesia. It's a complicated thing, the mind. But never fear, we'll cure you. We'll cure that troubled mind of yours. Who are you? Thorne, Dr. Thorne, I told you. Your welfare officer, responsible for both the welfare of body and mind. The body's easy, of course, as for the mind. Well, I'm a qualified psychiatrist, so have no fear. Keep on saying that. You keep on saying, have no fear. It must mean I'm well disposed towards you, so have no fear. Again, necessary precaution till you're feeling better. Now, do you feel like a talk? Where? Where is this hospital? Hammersmith. What's happened to all the traffic, then? Air conditioned and soundproofed throughout. Every hospital in England's being done the same way. High time, too, don't you think? I mean, how can the sick be cured when they can't sleep at night? So what's wrong with me? Hmm? It used to be called communism. And what do you call it? Neurosis, paranoia, psychosis, schizophrenia. It really depends how deep the disturbance is. That's what we have to find out, what I have to cure. Has it occurred to you I just might be incurable? Oh, no. No, no, no. Not these days. Have one, if you like. You're quite fit enough. What do you put in it? <laughs> Paranoid response. Do you mind if I have one? You bought it? The government paid. You choose for me. Oh. Malt whiskey. Exquisite. Slante, will you join me? <laughs> what proof? I think it's 85% now. Look at the label. The government has relaxed... Where's your proof? Of what? Of my communism. Oh, Tom. We know. It's all here. A detailed dossier. I'll read it to you when we've got time. What we're interested to know is why you're a communist. It's an experiment, really, about the board's scientific. When we know why, then we'll be able to cure you. Of course, on drugs to remove the anxiety. Well, I must be on my rounds. Other patients. Oh, for God. Top drawer of the desk, a present for you. Hope you approve the frame I chose. You may wish to talk about her. She thinks you're dead, by the way, so just give a buzz any time. And by the way, Tom, I think you should think about marriage 
as an institution and how it affects you personally. So just you think about marriage, Tom. What's going on? What the hell's going on? you get in here, mate? Hmm? And if you manage to get in, then there must be a way out. I've got my own buzzer, Dr. Thorne. I've found one of my very own. So just you keep on buzzing, mate. I'm gonna need you. really work. I mean, when the woman actually comes out of the house, the weather will be fine. Yeah. It's amazing. I want you to make me another little device. What for? Another job. When we finish with the G's HQ, I thought we'd spend a day in the country, Sussex. Oh, why? Cover my tracks. Where in Sussex? Uh, near Beckley, do you know it? Nice little house, quite secluded. Who's the party? Her name's Eleanor. A woman? Oh, with a name like that, I should hope so. Um, will she be alone? It's unlikely, but I think we'll be able to single her out. Now it's time for Coronation Street. Will Elsie Tanner be able to adjust to her new surroundings in the old people's home? Will the council slap a preservation order on the street and save it from demolition? Stay tuned for a few of the answers. Dr. Thorne, Guardian's Welfare. I haven't seen your people lately. What do you want? My assistant, Dr. Banks. You've nothing to worry about on that score, Mrs. Weston. The Guardians always look after their own, you know that. I would have telephoned and given you warning, but I didn't want to give you any cause for worry. Worry? Why should I worry? You're a bit worried, but you should be exactly, especially this day ahead. What is it you want, Dr. Thorne? alone. Of course. You sure? What is all this about? Good thing I didn't call yesterday. Why? Might have been embarrassing. For you, perhaps, not for me. And your friend? He would have thrown you out. All I can do is ask both of you to go, Dr. Thorne. Call me Mark. Would you please leave? Can I call you Claire? Get out! See, I feel I know you so well. From reports, official dossiers, my identity card. Oh, my sources aren't at all official, Claire. It's Tom. Tom has told me all about you. Or doesn't he matter to you anymore? Tom? Where is he? In hospital. I'm putting him together again. What hospital? At our rehabilitation centre. He's making remarkable progress. He'll soon be safe. What are you doing to him? When can I see him? Oh, soon. Very soon, Claire. Tom? Alive? Oh, yes. Very much so. Shall I give him your love? Tom. Sit down, Claire. <laughs> Keep your strength up, mate. I'm going to need you. Feel like a talk here? No? Well, how about a read? Hmm? Pleasures of the flesh, the world outside. Very domesticated. Claire must appreciate that. Silent strike, eh? That's a perfectly normal reaction. You can help it. I'll make a note of it. Your file here, Tom. Would you like to read it? 
Albert Speer inside the Third Reich. Your choice of books has been revealing. Nothing on the Soviet Union, nearly everything on Hitler's Germany. You're conveying a silent message to me, aren't you? England, you're telling me, is becoming like fascist Germany. That is why I, Tom Weston, oppose it. It's become such a cliché. Anything vaguely right-wing or anything that smacks of nationalism is labelled fascism. Your reactions are so predictable and in line with your background. I also believe your communism is emotional rather than ideological. I'd rather wear the banner, sing the international, march to a rosy future with a group of your comrades. That's your communism, Tom. Making up your sketchy philosophy and half-comprehended doctrine. I think you should read more, but something more substantial than inside the Third Reich. We've come a long way, really, just by talking. Even though I've been doing most of that. Achieved a great deal without violence. I've kept my word. No physical violence of any kind. You think you're tough, don't you, Tom? Well, you are. And an arrogant bastard, which makes you worth rehabilitating. And by the time I've finished with you, you're going to love England. Oh, no, no, really. Really love England, as you love Claire. By the way, I have news of your wife. Now, the last time you saw her, she was pregnant. Well, it now seems she's had a miscarriage. It wasn't an abortion. She might think it's the right thing to do, after all, to bring a fatherless child into the world. Would you like me to tell Claire you're alive? Yes, I think I will. Pretty interesting to see how she reacts. By the way, have you been thinking about marriage as an institution? Because I think you should. It's the uncertainty of it. Not being sure, not being able to see him, not hearing officially. I don't know what to believe. I think you'd better accept the fact that he's alive. Now. Is that the best news you've heard since he disappeared? Yes, of course. Quite sure? Why oh, shouldn't I be? Well, you were doing very well without him. No headaches, not one. And you like, and you love it. You want to throw that aside? By any choice. Nothing's inevitable. Do you really want the old life again? Do you want Tom back? I don't know. No, of course not. That's the human condition. You can pull strings. I want you to find out what you can officially, will you? Well, how can I be expected to know what to do when I don't know the state Tom's in? He'll soon be saying I'm putting him together again. That's what Dr. Thorne said. Well, what does it mean? What am I to expect? Thorne, Thorne, Thorne. Mark Thorne. Mark Anthony. There's a name for you. MBBBS, MRCP, London, 1972, DPM, 1974. Member of the Royal College of Psychiatrists, 1975. Yes. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. I can't have my most beautiful patient upset. There's something else I need your help oh, with. You overwhelm me. What else? Chris. What do I do about Chris? Well, I can't tell you what to do about Chris. He'll be back on Friday. And four days isn't long enough to sort it out? I don't know what to tell him. I once asked you if it was possible to love more than one person. And when I said yes, you told me I was no good at my job. I'm sorry, but this time I'm not testing you. Now I really want to know if it's possible to love two people at the same time. I have. Was it easy? What do I think of marriage as an institution? Hmm? What do I think of marriage? Shall I ask him about Claire? Or is that what he wants me to do? Taken my suggestion, have you? Been thinking about marriage as an institution or how it affects you personally? You don't want to talk about marriage? No? Yeah? What about communism? You don't want to talk about that? No, neither do I. We've heard it all before, haven't we? No, let's talk about Claire. Is she quite stable? Mentally, I mean. After all, it's not been easy for her, the miscarriage. Oh, was it an abortion? I have to get my facts right. Anyway, as you can imagine, she's been under a great strain, thinking you're dead, but putting on a brave face. She's a beautiful girl, isn't she? Hmm? Blonde? Blue eyes? 
Altogether very tasty. Yes, you're a lucky man, Tom. I rather fancy her myself. When I said no violence, I meant to exclude self-defense on my part. We need a stooge, a scapegoat, a something. We could use the husband. By the time they finish rehabilitating him, all he'll be fit for is selling matches off a tray in Oxford Street. Well, it depends how quickly I can move. You're not going to contact Thorne, are you? I mean, that would be too ridiculous. In an official capacity. I want. Now, I'll demand an explanation of why he's upset my patient. And she was doing so well. A lot of other information should come out, too. If it all goes well, we pin the blame on the communists. Makes it all cut, dried and clear cut for the G's. I'm sure Tom Weston will be a willing martyr for the cause. Lamb to the slaughter. Don't you want to be melodramatic about it? Well, it is rather my style, dear. Look, let's get going at the weekend with a bombing. I'm sure I can lay my hands on a Russian detonator. Then we can move on to something more spectacular when you get Weston out. You know. I do feel rather sorry for that man's wife. She really is a rose that grows in no man's land. What time is it? 8.45. Look at the clock. See for yourself. Night or bloody day! Day, Tom. Outside, the birds are singing, the sun is shining. What, in Hammersmith? Oh, yes, Tom, even in Hammersmith. It's a pity about the window. But we can't have another suicide attempt, not from the 19th floor. It's like the locked door for your own protection. I don't regard you as a criminal, Tom. Your dedication to communism is purely a mental aberration, something that I must try to cure in exactly the same way I would as if you had housemaid's knee or shingles. Now, Tom. I'd like to pose a hypothetical question. What would you do if I told you that Claire had found herself a boyfriend or even a lover? What would you do, Tom? Hmm? Go to pieces or plan revenge? On which one? Him, her or both? You'd do neither, would you, Tom? Hmm? Rather draw strength from your communism. You don't really believe in marriage, do you? Not communists? Free love, change your partners. I mean, to a man of your beliefs, it wouldn't seem in the least wrong if Claire had found herself another lover. You wouldn't be jealous, would you, Tom? It's over! Oh, no, Tom. I'm surprised. I believe you'd go to pieces. Now, under the present system of government, England is great again. Marriage is safe again if the individual accepts the system, a system based on property, which is to say, based on human nature. It's human to want property. It's a man's nature to want a wife who is his property. Keep off private property. Trespassers will be prosecuted. It's your nature, Tom. Yes, you're right to be unconcerned. After all, it was a hypothetical question. Claire hasn't a lover, as far as I know. How about a walk, hmm? Do you like some air? Never know. Might bump into Claire. Doesn't live far, no? Oh, come on. Only just down the road. Your personal property. Well, that's how you feel about her, isn't it? We're right and proper, so you should. You don't mind my going on about your wife, do you? No, of course you don't. I just want to help you to face the truth. And if the truth is that your wife has a lover, well, you can face it, can't you, Tom? Hmm? Oh, come on, let's go for that walk. Might even call in at Claire's. Think she'll be up yet, 9 a.m.? Oh, no matter, she'll be delighted. That is, if she's alone. <laughs> oh, let's chance it, shall we? Hmm? <laughs> we have to laugh. It's like a farce. Husband away, wife in bed with the lover. Husband returns unexpectedly, door locked, wife asleep in lover's arms. Then pandemonium into the closet under the bed. Husband suspicious, wife distracts him, lover makes getaway. We're always on the side of the lover in those situations. It's curious that. It's another aspect of marriage to think about. You ready, Tom? Here we are, Tom. Hammersmith.
You bastard, Thor. You bastard! Sorry about that, Tom. time around, right?
take a break for it. I'm getting out. Like hell. <laughs> See you in church. Sorry about that, Tom. But it was part of the cure. I'm really trying to help you. I thought we'd have dinner together this evening. Is it evening? Why? Aren't you sure? Losing track of the time. Ah, what have we got? Chicken today. Fancy some chicken, Tom. Let you do. Sit down, Tom. <clears throat> Not hungry? I see you are hungry, but you're punishing yourself for being so stupid. Ah, better cooperating at last. Champagne? What well, tasted? Mm. Beer. Nothing is ever quite what it seems. I've been very gentle about your wife, Tom. I thought I'd wait till you were strong enough. What about my wife? Eat your ticket. But what about her? It's delicious. What about my wife? Remember the hypothetical question, what would you do if Claire had found herself a lover? Well, the point is, she now has one. He's a good-looking chap, rich, important. Nothing is ever quite what it seems. <laughs> Playing me at my own game. But I believe you. Do you want proof? Oh, yes. He's moved in with her. Well, on the weekends. The rest of the time, he's out of London. He's not similar to your type, Tom. Your wife has gone for something very different, but that's understandable after what she's been through with you. I asked you to think about marriage. I now consider separation. You thought after a year's marriage you'd be on your own again. <laughs> well, now you just consider separation, Tom. By the way, Tom, Claire knows you're alive, by the way. I told her I felt I must before she gets too involved with this other chap. Would you like to see your wife, Tom? Hmm? Of course, it'd be a shock for Claire seeing her in this condition, but I think it would do you the world of good. Well, Tom, yes or no? Not sure? Well, then consider it for a while. Come on, come on. It's only a little shock, and the food is delicious. I do believe he's going to chance it. Hello, hey, my nice. love. Oh, I missed you. How's your week? Difficult. Oh, my poor love. Not dull, not drab, but difficult. How difficult? I'll be all right. How was your week? Interesting. Curious. Oh? Do you know what I've discovered? Not only do people need to be told what's good for them, some of them actually enjoy it. Stand here, cue there, sign this. As long as everything's arranged for them, there's no anxiety. All over the country, People are willing to obey because it's easier to. Really? Is that a good thing? Can be, if the orga organisation behind it is for the common good. Yes, I suppose so. Chris, tell me, what were your other girlfriends like? I mean, what type were they? An extraordinary question. Where did you meet them? I know one was at university. What about the others? What's all this about? I want to find out where I stand. I want to prove my theory. And what is your theory? We met one night on the embankment. I was lonely. You were... Just walking. You were looking for someone who was alone, not just walking. Did you meet any other girls just walking or at lost property offices, outpatients, waiting rooms? Did you ever work for Lifeline, Chris, or were you too busy with shelter and release? What's all this about? I want to find out where I stand. You spend the whole week thinking about me? You. And that's why it was difficult? Partly. 
What's happened? I love you, if that's what you want to know. But it's all fairly easy. I'm demanding, casual even. I mean, you come and go. Just two days a week here with me at my place. Move in with me. For two days a week, I'd find that fairly bloody depressing. No, the present arrangement suits you. But it doesn't suit you. I don't think it's good for me, nor is it right. Anymore. What do you mean? Tell me one other thing. Have you told your father about me? Has Sir Timothy Hobson, Prime Minister, heard of me? I mentioned you. But not by name. I mean, your reports on the state of England are more important. I don't talk about my private life to my father. I've never been able to. It's not that you're not important. He'd be embarrassed. Your own father embarrassed. And he must be spared that. What's happened? Chris, I've not handled it very well. I don't want you to stay. I was trying to make it less painful. I had a theory that you loved me because I needed help, but I'm all right now. I can cope again, so you needn't continue coming here. Whether you realise it or not, helping others is your nature. Why should I be the only one? Well, if you're looking for a way out, you can justify it by practically anything. Is that what you're trying to justify? I've had news of Tom. Is he alive? That's what I'm led to believe. And do you? Yes. When will you see him? Soon. Is it a rehabilitation centre? Chris, I didn't want to tell you. It's not your problem. How can you say that? I don't want it to be. Look, I think my father will... Not this time, Chris. Leave it, please. And you want to be left on your own? Yes. Do you love him? He's still my husband. I see. Look, um, if you need me... I'll telephone. And uh, if I need you... When I said consider separation, I didn't think for one minute that Claire would abandon you after five years of marriage, perhaps, but not after one. But she's just not interested. Well, to be fair, that's not quite right. If she was concerned, but not for you, Tom, for herself. She didn't give a damn about you. God, she said, how will I keep it from Chris? Her very words, Tom. Chris is his name, by the way. But don't you care, I asked. Of course I care, she said, but it's in the past. Don't you believe me, Tom? Nothing is ever quite what it seems. I want you to believe me, Tom. All right. Proof. Claire's outside. I'll give you a few minutes to pull yourself together, then I'll let her in. She's come to see you out of pity, Tom, which is about as good a reason as you can expect, considering the circumstances. So make the most of it, Tom. But aren't you going to get up of the bed? I mean, when the door opens, you're not going to greet your wife lying down. Now, come along, Tom. A little cooperation. You ready, Tom? Hmm? You ready? She's just outside. Hello, Tom. Fancy something to eat? Just as you like it. Looks delicious. Come along, Tom. There you are. Are you resisting the food or resisting me, Tom? How do you do it? Hmm? I'm trying to break you down, but you continue to resist me. Where do you draw this extraordinary strength from? Hmm? This concentration of yours. Concentrating on one thing 
and on nothing else. Is that how you do it? Yes, that must be how you do it. Singling out one thing and ignoring everything else. Now how can I break that concentration? Hmm? Ah! Did you think I didn't know Tom? Hmm? Look, Tom. Look, 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 Tom. Go on, look. Your only friend, Tom. Go on, look. But not all is lost, Tom. Not all is lost. Do you see, Tom? Do you see? Hmm? Another one. A replacement. There you are, Tom. I can't give you proof about Claire, Tom. You see, she won't come. She doesn't want to see you, Tom. Never. Tell him to leave me alone. He's to blame for all my troubles. That's what she said, Tom. Tell him. She's, she's finished with you, Tom. She's finished with you, Tom. <laughs> soon feel fine. Yeah. Just fine. Yeah. And when you do, I'll begin to put you together again. Yeah. That's a promise. Yeah. So never fear. It is a privilege, Dr. Benedict. Sit down. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Dr. Thorne, mm. it's been suggested that this isn't just a rehabilitation centre dedicated to the cure and readjustment of the inmates. And it's been further suggested that um, without the proper authority, you are conducting your own experiments. What an astonishing accusation. And I've been sent here to investigate personally before reporting on your activities. Well, the board inspects the premises regularly, Dr. Benedict. I mean, if there's been any sort of breach, I suggest you go through the proper channel. Ah, yes. Well, I'm in a, a position to bypass such authority. Oh, are you? I see. Thank you. Yes, I have to know mm. under what circumstances and conditions you're holding Tom Weston. In isolation, Doctor, and the conditions are almost luxurious. Would you like to see for yourself? Why is he in isolation? Rehabilitation, Doctor. Ah. People more important than the Board of Governors are interested in his condition. His condition? Well, we're learning a great deal about what makes a man a communist. The results should be of great interest to the medical fraternity. And of even greater interest to the Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> With respect to your position, Dr. Benedict, you're stepping beyond your province. But on uh, some formalities, even you cannot bypass. The Guardians are not your concern. Ah, but the welfare of my patients is. And Claire Weston has been one for some months. In fact, she came to me after you had paid her a visit and told her that her husband was alive. And yet you gave her no further information. Now, I find that action totally inexplicable and professionally unjustified. Yes, but I would as well, Doctor. If I was in your position, I was acting on orders. Recent subversive activity has been communist-inspired. Word will get around that Weston is alive. Here's our bait. Well, we hope the communists won't be able to resist it. Hmm. And you couldn't have found a, a more humane way of leaking the information? But it was the way suggested to me. Well, in that case, I wish you luck. Um, may I now see the man in question? Now for some information on Saturday's bomb attack on the Fulham Guardian's headquarters. Sergeant Jones died earlier today without regaining consciousness. That brings the death toll to five. Two civilians are still in a critical condition. It's now been proved that this senseless act of violence was communist-inspired. The men responsible have been identified. 
They died instantly when their getaway car crashed at high speed. I have with me in the studio Private Jordan, who gave chase, and we'll talk about the implications of this terrible act. While I was inside the garage, I would have made a and I spoke off duty. Hello. First Christopher Hobson. Speaking. Who is calling? Uh, you don't okay. know me. My name is Quamby. Quamby. What do you want? To know if you have qualms. Uh, what about? Up. England today. We'll be in touch, Chris. Soon. The miracle is not more people were killed. There were women and young kids all about. And you continued to give chase even though they kept on firing? Well, it's my duty doing that. I mean, I was only doing my duty like. I mean, they did kill three of my mates, didn't they? It's been confirmed that communists were responsible. What are your views about that? Well, it would have to be the communists, wouldn't it? I mean, to say, well, but the communists. 